Believe it or not, this was potentially the most dangerous step of my entire life. Oh, and did I mention this was an experimental craft? Jump in and miss grabbing the cage, you sink fast. Welcome back to Guadalupe, Mexico, the site of our very first great white shark encounters. Aboard the Socorro Vortex, we traveled over 175 miles to this prehistoric island in hopes of getting up close with the world's largest predatory shark. Here we go. And as millions of you witnessed, that's exactly what we did. But what if I were to tell you that we really didn't come all of this way for an ordinary shark cage adventure. What if I were to tell you the real reason we came this far was to embark on the single most daring mission we've ever attempted? Today, I will take you even closer to the most famous set of jaws on Earth in a one-of-a-kind shark cage submarine. By now, I'm sure everyone watching this video has at least seen images of a great white shark before. But have you ever seen a Spock? Probably not, because this self-propelled ocean cage is highly experimental and can only be piloted by one of two people in the entire world. Now, the sharks will let us get close in this, or oh, yeah. are they gonna get yeah. close to us? Both. Both, yeah. Meet Eric Hager, our pilot for today's mission and a world-renowned marine biologist and ocean photographer. So no matter what, we're not gonna sink. Well, that's on the, that, that would be the that's second not, step. That's not, that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I want you to say, yeah, we're not going to sink. You are in charge of monitoring your own air supply system. I won't be able to monitor that. If you run out of air, it's going to be your fault. You're probably asking yourself, or maybe even yelling at your screen, why are you putting yourself in this situation? Well, what we know of these mysterious creatures has been limited to years of topside observation, cage diving, and the infrequent free dive experiences that only a few have lived to speak of. So this vehicle truly represents an evolution in our understanding of the world's most famous shark, which is also perhaps the world's most famous animal. All right, so we had our debriefing with Eric on the self-propelled ocean cage, AKA Spock. And I have to say, I am so excited to get out there and in the water in this research vehicle. This is going to be probably one of the most unique experiences you could have with great white sharks in a safe way without free diving. I mean, certainly someday I'd love to have the opportunity to free dive with great white sharks, but this is about as close as you're gonna get here in Guadalupe. And now all we need to do is go get suited up, get our cameras ready and get out there for some action. As if this activity in of itself wasn't dangerous enough, the technical nature of this dive was also quite daunting. I would need to wear a full face regulator in order to maybe have communication with the pilot. However, underwater comms are notoriously unreliable. I would also be wearing a pony bottle BC in the case of an emergency bailout, in which I would need to rip off my full face reg to use it. Not ideal. Additionally, I would be wearing nearly 30 pounds of weight without fins, and I would sink like a rock one foot outside the confines of the cage. Oh, and did I mention this was an experimental craft? The connections and critical mechanisms were all exposed and at risk of damage from the divers. If I were to kick one accidentally, it could prove catastrophic. Eric is in the Spock. I'm about to get in the Spock, and then we're about to go get up close. Okay, some giant giant we'll get you. okay here we go, guys. See ya. This was potentially the most dangerous step of the day, and potentially of my entire life. Jump in and miss grabbing the cage, you sink fast. This was a one-shot deal, a no-miss scenario. This wasn't just water, it might as well have been looking off a 50-story skyscraper. This was it. Woo. As soon as I got hold of the bar, I pulled myself into the cage. And what had seemed roomy on the deck 
had suddenly shrunk, and there was barely any room to move. All right, I'm all set. Ready to go. But what was worse, my headset was silent. The communications had already failed. Eric and I would rely solely on hand signals for the entirety of the dive. In a way, I was now completely on my own. Once settled and breathing normally, I set the cameras and gave Eric the signal to launch. In an instant, we were off. The rush of water pressing against me as we glided below the boat was much more intense than I expected. Great, another obstacle. After adapting to these new sensations, the environment came into view. Clear and brilliant blues to my sides and above with a dark, ominous floor below, which wasn't really a floor at all. Instead, literally thousands of feet of water. The sharks were all around us, yet none of them were in sight. So we began our descent in hopes of meeting a great white shark face to face. Eric zipped the Spock up and down, checking different depths for shadows and signs of movement. The thermoclines, or temperature layers, were dramatic. Each dive down would zap us with freezing cold water, and the light would retreat right along with it. It was very dark below 60 feet, a perfect environment for these sharks, as they have adapted retinas that are actually split, one part suited for surface light, and one part adapted for darkness. And while we certainly require wetsuits to regulate our body temperatures to keep from hypothermia, the sharks are able to regulate their bodies all on their own. We had been looking for nearly 25 minutes without a single sign of a shark. But then, I saw a shadow to my right. It was big. I signaled to Eric to turn starboard, and as soon as he did, a great white swam into view. I should have been alarmed, the way it seemed to appear from nowhere. However, with my camera rolling, I was thrilled to feel our speed increase to keep up with the predator. I couldn't risk missing the shot. The shark easily outflanked us, and for a moment, seemed to be gone entirely. Then, it quickly doubled back and was in front of us again. However, we never really got that close. A first sighting, yes, but the shot we were after, not at all. This adventure was far from over. After the relief of getting some footage had washed over me, I was back on the lookout. Great whites can grow up to one ton and over 18 feet in length, and swim at speeds in excess of 30 miles an hour. Even with the Spock to protect us, I couldn't help but feel completely outmatched. But who could blame me? It's not every day you find yourself in the kill zone, a favorite hunting ground of the Great White. Again, we dashed around the grounds. Only sardines and other fish came into view. And after 45 minutes, I began to think that was it. That was as close as we were going to get. When then, Eric suddenly turned. He must have seen something I hadn't. I knew we were near the boat, but I wasn't quite sure how close. And then I saw the shark. It was swimming straight for us. All I could do was breathe and keep my camera as steady as possible. This was it, the encounter of a lifetime. Time slowed in that moment, and as the shark moved and swam back around for an even closer look, the fact that I was being observed and calculated by this creature was unmistakable. A real connection between myself and the shark that I've been dreaming to meet had finally happened. As it turned and swam away, a sense of relief came over me. I was ready to be back on the boat, but I wanted to tell everyone the tale of how obvious and beneficial vessels like the Spock would be 
for revealing the true nature of this misunderstood species. I certainly would be walking away today with a brand new perspective that I never thought possible. Woo. We got really close okay. to a shark. That was awesome. That was the shot we needed. So much more intense than I thought it was going to be. Just give me a second. I need to like absorb the fact that I'm back on the boat. <laughs> wow, what an experience. Getting to be in the realm of the great white shark in a shark cage submersible. Are you kidding me? That was the coolest thing I have ever done. The water viz got pretty bad at the end, but we did get to see some great white sharks up close. In fact, that last one I thought was gonna hit the camera. Huge thank you to the Sakura Vortex and all the crew that helped us out today. A special thanks to Eric for captaining the Spock and keeping me safe so I get those up close shots for everybody at home. I hope you guys love this episode as much as I did. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a second of the action ahead on Blue Wilderness. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next dive. All right, I'm gonna go warm up and dry off. As the boat departed back from the mainland, I couldn't help but be grateful for all that took place these last few days in Guadalupe. I knew I would be back. When? I don't really know. For another round in the Spock? Probably not. I won't lie, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. If you thought this adventure was crazy, go back and watch us in the surface cage to learn more about these world-famous predators and why they call Guadalupe home. The place we are at right now is known as the Kill Zone, and as you can imagine, the Great White Shark's favorite buffet. But our goal isn't to see seals getting eaten while we're out here. Our goal is to get under the water in the realm of the great white shark so we can get the cameras up close and personal with one of the world's top marine predators.